Good evening and welcome to Marion Local High School where tonight WSM brings you a non-conference matchup. The Macomb Panthers are here to play the Marion Local Flyers. Good evening everyone, my name is Mark Shines. My pleasure to be played by play alongside my good friend Jerry Snodgrass. Jerry, what a good non-conference matchup we have in week two. A great non-conference matchup, two very interesting styles, and really, is there any better place to be on a Friday night than here in Maria Stein? Yeah, absolutely. Macomb got one and over the win over Galleon. Very local. They have a win last week over Wapakoneta. How about keys to the game, Jerry? Well, you know, first of all, for Macomb coming off a big win, they have to win the line of scrimmage. You know, they're, they're not very deep, so they do have to win that line of scrimmage. Second of all, they have to execute the big plays. We all know they've got the big plays. They need to execute them in order to have a chance to win. And thirdly, even though it's not their biggest arsenal, they have to establish the run. And I think that's very, very important. How about uh, Mary Local? They have a good win last week over Wapak. How about that? Well, and I think when you have that big win, key number one for them, as Tim, uh, Coach Goodwin had said, was to keep improving from last week, especially with offensive execution. Secondly, they need to play sound defense. And the reason for that, I mean, you always do, but what, a, what an offense that uh, McComb has. And third, they have to win the special team battle. And nothing is more evident than last week when the outcome of that game was really, really decided by special teams. That was McComb. They lost this game last year 10 to nothing. It's always been a low scoring game. They also played a triple overtime game way back in 2012. It's the second year of this contract. We've got the game coming up right after this. You're watching High School Football on WOSN. Welcome back to Booster Stadium here in Maria Stein. It's Marion Local in their blue and gold uniforms and Macomb in their white with black pants today, red helmets. Kickoff is going to head into the corner to Andrew Swisher. And Andrew's going to be hemmed in and push up close to the 16-yard line. Marion Local won the toss. They deferred to the second half, hence the kickoff. That will bring out the quarterback. Here's our officials for this evening. Jeff Klaus will be the man in the white hat. Mark Keller, Brett Roberson, Ben Mock, and Damon Coverman will make up his crew this evening. You That's see. a solid crew. That is. McComb, Chris Algie's team defeated Galleon last week, a D4 team, 54-26. You can see those numbers right there, their margin of 26. The quarterback is Grant Dishong. We'll give his numbers from the opening week in just a moment, along with the running back, Andrew Swisher. This is Swisher. And from the 16-yard line, not much room for him on first down. And I talked about, uh, you know, that they need to, that McComb needs to establish that running game. Swisher's going to be called on a lot. And again, we're going to see that McComb has a ton of big plays in their arsenal, but they really, really need to establish that line of scrimmage and run the ball. It's actually a three-yard pickup. We could hear, see Swisher again. Had 142 yards last week and a score. He'll be in the backfield along with Deshaun. And now to throw, Dishong's going to air it out deep. He's got a guy open and puts it right into the hands of Grant Glosser. Well, you know, I, I talked about play. that as being the, one of the big keys to a, you know, execute on those big plays, and there was one of them. Glosser had three receptions for 46 yards and a score last week. He's a 6'2 senior. That pushes the ball into flyer territory at the 47, 33-yard pickup. Tackle on the far side by Carter Jones. So we're going to go trips to the left this side in, in the formation. And what do we got? We have a Macomb timeout early. Timeout for us also. You're watching high school football at WSN. Last meeting of these two schools last year, very local one, 10 to nothing. Obvious defensive battle. McCombs moving the football in this contest. There's a pile up, pile up the middle by Swisher. Mark, you talk about that matchup last year, and you know we go back to when they met in the playoffs. But that's what I love about these two teams and these two coaches. You know, they know the solidness of both programs. Let's play each other. You know, yeah. let's play each other. We've got both got league games coming up. They're going to be difficult leagues to play in, and yet we're willing to challenge ourselves and our right. team uh, in a, a non-conference game. Trips left, and we're going to get motion and a little movement over here by Chase Woodruff. That will march the football back to the 50-yard line. That's the same formation, I believe, that they set in before the uh, timeout they took.
So we're looking at second and 13 from midfield. Deshaun's going to roll this way. Now cut it up inside. He's got room to run. And gets a lot of that penalty back plus a little bit. As he gets down to the 44 of the Flyers. Good run that time by Deshaun. Good cut back. You can see Darren Meyer was making the defensive play there. Darren is a reigning defensive player of the year in the Midwest Athletic Conference. Looking at third down. Need about seven. Two receivers go each way. Grant Dishon, 5'9", senior quarterback. And he will step back to throw. Quick pass, that's caught. This is the same guy that had the big catch a moment ago, Camden Glosser. He's going to be down to the 40, and that means about three yards short in decision time. We were talking about Glosser there during the timeout. You know, 6'2", you know, just great hands, good speed. You certainly, you, you use those guys, and that's what they do well. So the football is down to the 40-yard line. Picked up four with that play, and into punt formation go the Panthers. Kick headed to the sideline. The kick was done by Braxton Althauser, and Braxton must have saw those big punt returns last week from Kyle Otte, and he said, we're not going to give you a chance to kick it out of bounds. Well, there's another key that I was talking about for Marion Logo at the win the special teams. But, um, you know, right there, that, that helps them certainly. McComb had the football. Here's our weather this evening. Kind of a cloudy morning this, this morning. Chance of rain perhaps, but uh, not down here and not this evening. So from their own 28-yard line go the Flyers, their quarterback. Here's Tim Goodwin's numbers. They had a win last week over Wapak Kaneta. And you can see that score was 21-7. The quarterback, Tate Hess. This is Meyer in motion. And I think that handoff went to Darren Meyer, as a matter of fact. You know, and the Panthers know they have to stop that run. They, they've got to make them throw the ball. And one of the big keys, I think McComb might have 14 guys going both ways. And I think, you know, even though it's not overly hot, uh, you know, still that, that plays a toll in a high school it game. It certainly does. That running back was actually 34 and not 24. That's Drew Laws. He lost a couple, second and 12. This is Adi from the Wildcat formation, and Kyle Adi might have got a yard back, but Probably end up right at about the 26-yard line, and that's going to set up third down. You know, Jerry, we, we talked a little bit about last year's game, and you think of Chris Alzich team, you typically think of, yeah, these guys are really not to score points, but last year they held the Flyers to just 10. Correct, yeah, and that's the, you know, we're talking about them playing Galleon last week, and, you know, we go back to the NOL days when mm. Galleon was that big AAA school, uh, you know, in most sports, but... You know, still a good matchup for them in a, in a non-league game. Third and 11, yeah, Division Four is Galleon. Hess going to throw it over the middle and goes right through the hands. And everybody's looking around for a flag, didn't get one. The ball went through Kyle Adi's hands, well defended that time by Chase Woodruff. And, and a big stop by McComb yeah, on this. Certainly was. And into point formation will go, and that's it. Aiden Eifert, who averaged 40 and a half points, uh, 40 and a half yards last week on four punts. And going back is Althauser. And along with him is Glosser. Here's Eifert's kick. Tracked down by Althauser. And he makes the first two guys miss. Gets back up to the 32-yard line. So we're just changing punts right here. 7.43 to go. McComb will take over for their second possession. You know, Mark, I talked about the big plays and everything by McComb and what they're capable of, but last week they had 540 total yards. How's this for balance? <laughs> 270 yards passing, 270 yards rushing. Yeah, how about that? Again, it'll be Grant Dishong in the backfield. Last weekend that went over Galleon, 11 of 18. Had one interception and five touchdown passes. Here's Loft the pass out. That one goes over the head of Cannon Glosser and will fall incomplete. We go to second down. 
You know, as far as smaller schools in Northwest Ohio, you know, a lot of schools do not see the offensive sets that McComb gives. You know, the Coach Algy is a genius when it comes <laughs> to that. Kids love playing for him, and um, so yeah, it's 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 unique. You really have to prepare. Second and ten from their own 33-yard line. Quick out. This is caught by Althauser. He's brought down immediately. Nathan Busher was out there. I think Tate Hess was in on that stop yeah, too. Was, Pretty good open yeah. field tackle. Hanging on to him there. Yep. A little meeting here. See where the football is going to be placed down at. Oh, there was a flag on the play. Okay, got a motion penalty. Will go against McCombs. We'll back that one up to the 28. On the offense. Second down. And we'll go back to second and 15. Yeah, you know, you, it's what a challenge to be a defensive quarter, a defensive player, because last week you saw Wapakoneta, who was a very basic football team and does that very, very well. And then you go to McComb, and you might see wishbone, you might see five wide, you might see about anything out of those guys. Wait, Coach Algie becomes so inventive. So a real challenge to the defensive staff this week, I think, from Marion Local. And that's one of the reasons why Coach Goodwin said, you know, the continued improvement you know, it's going to be shown in a lot of different phases of the game. Here's Dishong trying to get wide. Sweep action. He got up close to the 35-yard line. We're going to call it the 34-yard line. They need to get to the 43 for a first down, so it's going to be third and nine. Their third and longs are interesting. You know, you never know what they're going to throw at you, but... You know, it could be anything but a trick play to, you know, again, they're very good in the passing game. Let's go, Blue! Play clock at 10 as they go two by two with their receivers. Deshong back to throw. Here comes pressure. Steps up and throws, and it's picked off. Throws it into the hands of Tate Hess as he overthrew his receiver. And you can give a lot of credit for the pressure on that one. Absolutely. Good pressure from the Marion Local people up front. Hess with a, a defensive play and the Flyers in great field position. And Jerry, that's how they scored last week. Yep. And that's, uh, you know, that's so, so that's such a turning point early on in this on establishing things because McComb was, you know, moving the ball a little bit. That hurts. Tate Hess picks that one off. Now we'll accept the snap. Quick pitch, Adi trying to get wide, and he's not going to get out of the hands of Montana Pierce. That goes all the way back to the 47-yard line, so lost seven and sets up second and 17. And, Mark, you talked about, you know, the preparation, the challenges of preparation by uh, the defense for Marion Local, but... You know, at the same time, the challenges for McComb is just execute. There you see, he has to make a break on the ball. It was, it was overthrown. Into the backfield this time will be Drew Loss. Hess is going to go left with the football. Straight run for him. Cuts back inside. Tate Hess inside the 40. Spin move, and he gets down inside the 35-yard line. Nice run, Tate Hess. And we got a couple flags yes, down on we the we do. Right about midfield, maybe the 49-yard line, 47, I guess, they're going to put the flag down. Here's again. Holding. So that's going to wipe out a big play. Big play and a great run. Yes. Holding. Offense number 33. All the way back to the 43-yard line of the Flyers. They need to get to the 30. So they're looking at second and 27 for first down yardage here. All the, all the points put up on the board last week and by these two teams, and we're in a defensive struggle. Meyer in the backfield along with Hess. And we get another flag. Hess is going to air this one out deep. He's got a guy open, and he threw it right into the arms of Nathan Busher. Let's see what the flag is. And I may be wrong, but I think there was motion on this one side. Yeah, you are correct. 
Illegal formation on the offense. Call is illegal formation. Boy, two really good plays on this on this series. Wiped out by penalties. So we're going to take it back five more, this time to the 37-yard line. You know, that might be a five-yard penalty, but in reality, that yeah. is a 30-yard penalty, yeah, 35-yard penalty. Take away the positiveness that occurred and have to wipe that out. Nice diving catch, however, by Busher. It has just kind of laid it out there, let him run into it. Hess last week, just four of 12 throwing the football for 34 yards. He had a catch himself, though. Really nice play. Oddy pass out of a Wildcat formation. Has to throw. Throws it over the middle. And we're going to get a flag yeah. on that one. Yep. Well, and most importantly, a first down out of it, yeah, I it believe. Is. Well, it's oh, a 15-yard yeah. penalty. Pass interference. Yeah, you're right. Number 14. Second down. Still going to be second down. Yep. It's a 15-yard pickup from the line of scrimmage, which makes it a certainly much more manageable situation. And I run out of space to write, Jerry. <laughs> I got a little box in here for each play. And I, third penalty on this particular down is still second down, but to the 49 now. So it's the 48, uh, excuse me. You're fine. You're fine where you're at. High <laughs> formation this time. Pitch aisle, Adi, Kyle Adi cuts inside. Kyle Adi runs inside the 40 before he's brought down. And that was a great block on the outside to open up that run. Yeah, Mark Shine and about the 39 yard line. We'll give it an eight yard pickup and they still need nine here on third down. Yeah, we're gonna see a great kick out block over here. It was Aiden Eifert got yes. that one, yep. Third and nine from the 39. Meyer and Hess, man in motion. Laws, he takes the quick handoff and too much penetration. And you see on the bottom of the pile. That number five, I think, shoot. Yep. That lost yardage, so we're back to the 45 yard line and that means Eifert goes into punt formation again. And over end kick. This is Braxton Althaus. Came down hard on yeah, that one. Sure did. So we punt, we change positions. McComb will get the football for the third time with 4.02 to go here in our opening quarter. But you know, that, that, that series by Marion Loco, take away the penalties. For the most part, they were moving the ball pretty well. And I think that's a positive. You just got to get over those darn penalties. From the 20 yard line, McComb, possession of number three. Interception was of no significance to them. So there you go. there's your wishbone, Jerry. Got to look at a little bit of everything with these guys. Hand off up inside. Ball carrier this time is Montana Pierce. You don't see the wishbone much anymore in high school, that, do you? No. Or anywhere. Pick up a yard to the 21. TB44 is celebrating its 40th anniversary this year, and WSN's a part of that celebration. Would you donate $40 as a thank you for 40 years of local broadcasting in this region? Donate online at WTOW.com backslash donate or call 419-339-4444. Dishong to throw on the wheel route. He's got a guy open, and it's going to be picked off. Hess again. Hess has got room to run up the sideline. Cuts inside a block on Dishong, and Tate Hess into the end zone. What a great run after the interception. See if we can figure out here on our replay where he picked that off yet. Somewhere right around the 40 yard line. Take a look at it again, Jerry. A little bit of pressure. And here comes Hess, makes a break on the ball. And to the end zone he goes. The PAT guy is Carson Bills. 
It was one for two last week. The holder is Carter Jones. And that kick is up. And thanks to the second interception of the game by Tate Hess, it's 7-0 Flyers. You're watching high school football on WOSN. Tonight's premier sponsor for the Marion Local Flyers is Hillsman Automotive, providing professional automotive services since 1947. Everything from simple tune-ups and repairs to complete engine overhauls. Marion Local premier sponsor this evening, Tate Hess with his second interception. That one went 37 yards. We kind of scoped it out on the replay thanks to the guys in the truck. And McComb now trails 7-0. Well, your offense is having trouble. Let's let the defense score one for you. And Mark, while we're waiting on this kickoff and possible return. I'm going to drop, picked up, Alt House, And he's going to get snowed under right about the 15. Go ahead, Jerry. I was going to mention about, you know, we talked about this before the game started during the national anthem. Yeah. And I know people aren't seeing this, but as we're seeing, watching the kickoff return. But talk about what high school sports teach. When that national anthem was being played and the colors were marched across the field, there wasn't a person here moving or talking. And I think, as you said, if any of these young kids here would have done anything, mom, <laughs> grandma, aunt and uncle would have come out the stands and corrected them. Yeah. That is so impressive for what communities and teach that athletics are a part of. Well, we're on the Marion local side. It looked the same way on the Macomb yes, side. Yeah, just reverence for the national anthem, and we appreciate that. Here's a Macomb trailing now by seven. Here's a handoff. Trying to bounce it wide is Swisher. And too much flyer defense. He might have got back to the line of scrimmage plus, but not much. That linebacking crew does such a good job for uh, Mary Local. Sites, Myers, Eifert, Arling. A lot of freedom out there, a lot of movement. They're quick, they're strong. So they do pick up a, almost two to get to the 17 yard line, second and eight. McComb needs to do something here with the football. They moved, had a one successful pass play, got it down a little bit, and they've had a punt and two turnovers since then. Dishong alone in the backfield this time. His man in motion. Dishong will keep and go back to his right. Dishong first down yardage and more. Good first down run for Grant Dishong. He gets to the 32 yard line. Pick up a 15 on that play. He's quick. He is, yeah. Grant Dishong listed at 5'9". Second, uh, his first, uh, second first down of the game, and this will be from their 32-yard line. A rapidly moving first quarter, which is under two minutes to go. Same play. Dishong again, cuts it back outside again. He's going to pick up about seven on that play. They're putting all the strength and formation out here to the left side. Motion to the right, to the left, and opens that up for him. See, they pulled number 65 in there. That'd be Thane Steinbrook. Football's up to the 39 yard line, so that was a seven yard pickup on first down. Trips are going to go left this time. Dishon, quick swing pass out into the hands of Braxton Althaus and through those hands. will fall incomplete and we'll go to third down. I didn't see that whistle at first, but I knew it was a forward pass. So That's always the concern when you have a little swing passes like that. Third down. That's a tougher pass than most people think. He's out there, mm -hmm. he's behind the line of scrimmage, and he's open. But boy, you've got people breathing down your neck right away. Third and three, Flyers look like they're coming. And they do come. Dishon keeps, runs past the blitz. And I think he got to the first down. That is correct. He got to the 44-yard line with that run. Yeah, the defense was coming. He just got by it. 
So he picked off a couple of his passes, and he turns to the run game. Picked up a couple of first downs so far has Grant Dishon. Trips going left again. And he runs back to the right. And this time the Flyers are there to get him. That was Darren Meyer who made that stop. Looking for where they put the football down. Looks like he lost a yard back to the 43-yard line. So we've got a second and 11. Panthers do not have to run another play in this quarter should they choose to let the clock run down. I think just for the simple fact that you know they got so many guys going both ways, they are going to let it run down. That Take they the do. Extra time. We've played one. The first 12 minutes are in the book here from Booster Stadium in Marion Local. The Flyers with a 7-0 lead thanks to the interception by Tate Hess. You're watching high school football on WOSN. Home Insurance, your trusted local insurance specialist, is proud to bring you tonight's scoreboard. Member of the Wayne Insurance Group with two locations to serve you in Chickasaw and in Versailles. That's Homan's Insurance. And our first quarter scoreboard. The local Flyers are up 7-0. So we head into quarter number two. This will be a second, and the scoreboard says 10, right from about the 43-yard line for the Macomb Panthers. Grant Dishong in quarterback. Alongside him is Andrew Swisher. And this will be Swisher with a carry. And he's got nowhere to run. The flyer defensive front stepping up a little bit. I think number 62, that'd be Simon Partington was on the bottom and several of his buddies were there too. They're gonna call it a no gain right back to the 43 yard line. It was Partington beat a block. So McComb faces third and 10. Their receivers go two by two this time with Swisherman in the backfield with Deshaun. Four man rush. Deshaun throws out pattern and throws it high. It was caught on the far side of the field by Chase Woodruff. The chase was out of bounds though, wasn't he Jerry? Yes, he was by quite a bit. And that's good defensive coverage that got him out of bounds. So McComb ran eight plays on this possession, but they're going to be forced into a punch, punch situation. And Braxton Althaus will be the punter. 5'10", junior. Kyle Adi wears number 25 is deep. He along with, looks like Nathan Busher. This will be Adi on the bounce. And they get to him this time. Good yeah. coverage that time by McComb. Last week, Audie had two punt returns of each one was about 37 <laughs> yards. And yeah, set so both uh, touchdowns up that occurred in the second half. Ray Local will take over. This time with 11.09 here to go in quarter. Number two, they'll get the ball right on their own 29-yard line. Mark, we were talking about the flow of the game, and it's you know, kind of lacking a little bit. But, boy, those big guys, and I'll mention them here a little bit, those big guys on the line are really, really called upon in this. Kyle out in the eye. Ball gets dropped. Turnover or not, everybody scrambles for it. Looks like Hess was able to jump back on it. Did you look at those? Affectionately, we'll refer to them as hogs, and I'll spell yeah. it different. I'll spell H-O-W-G-S. But, um, you know, Shane Fleck, 68, Adam Winter, 51, Mason Rose anchoring that at center position, Kyle Ungren, Jake Top, two tackles. You know, those, those guys are the unsung heroes in football. And, it always bothers me, Jerry, to hear him talk about skilled position. Like, like those big fellows up front yeah. aren't skillful. <laughs> you know, I, I, I think that's a, a disrespectful thing to the big fellows. Yes, it is. Yes. He's got receivers two by two this time, and he will throw. Over the middle, it's got a guy open, and that one's picked off as he throws it into the hands of Camden Glassner. There was a little hesitation time. out there by both receivers, I think. Yes. They were, they were right together. I think maybe one ran the wrong pattern. So McComb, they get an interception this time. Here's the pass. 
And you can see the pickoff as it goes fought, fought for a little bit by Camden Glosser, and he will take over with his team right oh, on the 50-yard line. Good field position <laughs> for sorry. Macomb. By far their good. best starting position today. They've started on their I own 17, 33. 20-yard line and 15-yard line. So by far, this is Braxton Althaus. And he's going to pick up a couple on first down to the 48. Same thing. I think the linemen for uh, McComb, the Panthers, mm -hmm. have really come on. You know, they've, they've had some pretty good drives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. DeWeese, McGill, Bormuth, Steinbrook. Gibbs. Oh, a little more up than what I've been doing. Hold on, wait, I'm way too limited. So Power sorry. up the middle, I'm, spun through I'm the tackle of Partington to pick up a couple harder <laughs> yards to the 46. And we're to third and six for the Panthers. <laughs> but you're right, those guys are just every bit as skilled as those other guys. Let's talk about good communicators with each other on the line. Let's see the look at them. 52 is Owen DeWeese, 53 Logan McGill, 61 Nick Bormuth, 65 Thane Steinbrook, 67 uh, Elijah Gibbs. And they're going to go trips right. Two receivers to the left. Here's Blitz coming off the edge, and they get him. The Blitz that time, several players in there, but the one who made the tackle was Nick Ranley on the Blitz. And he gets sacked all the way back to his own. 46 yard line. They called that at the right time. He had no time. It's lucky he hung on, on the ball. You also see that uh, number 80, Dan Bruns, was in there. And the punt formation they go. And again, with Busher and Adi deep. Low snap picked up. Ball's going to get to Adi right about the 13 yard line. Adi trying to get all the way to his right. Makes the first guy miss. Look out. And Kyle Otte got caught from behind. He had that one guy to beat. Now, uh, Brad, uh, Brad Meals was the one who got him. Or he was off to the racers. Good run back, but really good blocking to set that up. So Marion Local survives the INT and will take over on their own 33-yard line. They actually gained about four yards because it was on their own 29 when the interception occurred. So they've actually picked up four yards with the trade of situations. That was a good saving tackle by Meals. Mm. Brad Meals from Macomb. Handoff, jumping over the pile at the line of scrimmage. Look out. This is Meyer. And Darren Meyer with a really nice run on first down. And he gets into Panther territory all the way to the 44 yard line. Pickup of 23 yards for Darren Meyer. See the tackle, tack, saving tackle by Camden Glosser. So into Panther territory with eight minutes to go. Full complement of timeouts for Coach Goodwin. What an incredibly hard run by Darren Meyer, mm -hmm. too. This is Adi from the I formation. Adi pushes the ball down to about the 37-yard line. Strong run for him. Kind of wonder if Coach Goodman said, you know, we have a number superiority tonight. Let's see if we can wear them down a little bit. You can almost see that in this, in this series. You really can. Like, we've got something going here. Let's keep it going, and let's wear it down. Pick up those seven, second and three from the 37-yard line of the Panthers. Meyer shifts to the left of Hess. And Meyer will keep it himself. Big hole off right tackle. Meyer dragging play players down to the 25-yard line. That's a 12-yard pickup for him. Those linemen I mentioned just a little bit ago from Marion Local. Boy, are they coming through on this drive. They're opening up holes. They're staying with their blocks. Bro, what? what? I'm quickly looking at my play sheet, Jerry. I don't think Marion Local had a first down until this drive. I think you're right. And they will go from their own 25, or from the Panther 25 yard line. Consecutive first downs from the drive that began back on their own 33 yard line. And we have a McComb timeout. Their second and a half. Our break also, 6.53 to go in the opening half. You're watching high school football on WSN.
Home Panthers take a timeout. Tonight's instant replay sponsors OPAC in Osgood for all your industrial painting, staining, and assembly needs. Call OPAC. We appreciate them sponsoring our instant replays this evening. That might be just a physical type of timeout, Jerry, to get him a little bit of a rest. Yeah, I thought that was a very good timeout call by Coach Alger. This time, Adi hands off out of the Wildcat. He hands it off to Darren Meyer. What? He's had a really good set of downs what? here in this particular down? drive. Pushes the three-yard pickup down to the 22. I can also see the coaching staff from Marion yeah, Logan saying, I don't care. Uh, Let's just keep going. That's right. What's the old uh, Jim Tresser was in his offensive coordinator, his first job, and he ran the same play about four times. The head coach says, when are you going to run set play number two? When Take they stop three. play number one. <laughs> so, so here's Adi in the Wildcat again. This is his wide out to the right side of the formation. A low snap. Adi picks it up, and he's going to be brought down in the backfield. He is snagged right away by number 65, and that is Thane Steinbrook. We have seen him do that a couple times today. And that low snap just through that timing of that off, just that hesitation yeah. enough that he it couldn't get around him. But the 5'9 Steinbrook still managed yeah. to get in the backfield in a really big hurry. The ball is back to the 26-yard line, so now we're at third and 11. Yeah, I certainly am not taking anything away from Steinbrook yeah. on that. He was quick in that backfield. I'm not sure it would have made any difference. Drew Laws brings the play so in from the sideline. Play clock is down to seven. Oh. <laughs> There's Adi in the Wildcat again. He's going to roll right and look to throw. <laughs> Pass it goes through the hands on the far side of the field of Laws. <laughs> no, Pretty good coverage that over was, there, too. Yeah, that was good coverage by McComb. I'm not sure who it was out there. It was the sights, I think. Falls in complete. So we go back to the 26-yard line. And it is fourth and 11. Let's see if we can pick up a number. Adi threw a really nice pass last week. It was caught. It was 26 is who it was. Yeah, and that's I'm Meals. sorry. I was like a throw. Oh, that's Meals. Yep. yep, Brad Meals. Here we go. Hess is back at quarterback. He's got two receivers to his left. And back to throw. Tate Hess is going to throw to the end zone. And he's got a man open. He put it right into the hands of Nathan Busher. 26-yard TD pass. You know, Mark, I talked about, you know, the big play possibility out of McComb, and right now it's been the big plays out of uh, yeah. the, the Flyers. I mean, one obviously an interception, but the other one that was a big play. Okay. Certainly was. Put that one right on the money, a little post pattern that time oh, yeah, to Busher. I hope you don't shank this field. Yes, pass was on the money, and now we go to the PAT attempt by Carson Bills. Hammered his first one through. And we get a whistle. Is this about? I think we had down. an offside oh, encroachment okay. on the on the call. <laughs> <laughs> offside. Yeah, encroachment defense it is. on the 26. Now you go to the, the we go for two, and it looks like they're going to. Now we'll retry. That moves the football to about a yard and a half out, and Flyers attempt to go for two then after that uh, P, uh, uh, penalty on the PAT. Oh my gosh. Hess is going to go under center. Adi is the tailback. Meyer's in front of him. Adi, you know, that's Meyer. Meyer gets into the end zone, and the PAT attempt works. The Flyers go up 15-0 on the McComb Panthers. You're watching high school football on WOSN. We're now accepting nomination for the John Reed Leadership Award. Nominate coaches who exemplify Christian character, humility, discipline, mentorship, leadership, commitment to others, and excellence on the field. Nominations can be made at WOSN.TV backslash John Reed. Did you know John? Always love seeing that John was my cousin. Wait, is that right? John was my I cousin. I've forgotten that. Opera Sandusky, and, you know, that, that uh, and he was just enough older than me that uh, all of us in the family, we, we just, no, just worship John. That ball bounces on the ground before Swisher picked it up. And Jerry, I've been uh, fortunate to be on that selection committee since its inception, and there are some tremendous men who have 
uh, accepted that award. And uh, to know that he was your cousin, that makes it even a little bit more special. How about oh, that? Oh, it does. I, I, you know, I just I loved what he did, you know, at Coldwater. I loved, you know, following him. I, I wanted to be like him, you know. I mean, I, I started my career coaching football, and I coached football for quite a while. But I just wanted to be like John. You know, everybody in the family. Nick, Nick, okay with it. I saw <laughs> some of your basketball teams play. You were still coaching <laughs> football. <laughs> That's true. Good point. I played basketball like like yeah. his football teams did. From the 23-yard line. This handoff is up the middle, and that's going to find almost no room to run. Perhaps a yard for Swisher. Seeing a little bit of momentum right now, too, mm. don't you? I, yeah. You know, we talked about the flow of the game wasn't really there. Now that flow is all in the side of Marion Local and the momentum. See, it pulled the guy through the hole that just too many blue shirts. They're having it figured out. He's second and nine. Like on the bottom of the pile, perhaps, was Nick Randley. A couple of his buddies in there with him. Defensive lineman. I'm thinking I think when you've I got four why. good, strong linebackers like Marion Local. Yeah. That's a, oh, that's a tough boys. defense to block. Blitz coming. Pass out. That's tipped at the Ooh. line of scrimmage. See who got that. Was I think Aiden Eifert. I think it was Eifert as well. Let's take a look at it again. He comes off the edge, and that is correct. Read that pass, dropped off just a little bit. Sometimes you don't realize, people don't realize how big of a play that is. Mm -hmm. that, that could have gone for a long, you know, long yardage, and Eifert's hand up on the ball stops that. It's a 5'10", 185 pounder, and you know, with all that equipment he's got on to jump as well as he right. did too, to get a hand up and knock that one down. We're looking at third and nine Panthers. It's gonna be a keeper by the quarterback, Dishong. Picks up a few yards to about the 26, but well short of the first down. So I know Marion Local is looking at getting this back and you know, to get the ball with under four minutes left, but they're gonna want another score going into halftime. And this will, they'll ahead. have the ball the second half. That's true. And this will be the fourth punt of the first half for McComb and Braxton Althauser. I'm not sure somebody didn't get a hand I on that one. Yeah. Marion Local with 3.47 to go in the opening half. And on a bit of a run with a 15-0 lead. And they will take over in pretty good field position. Season 18 of the Sports Report is underway every Friday night at 10 p.m. on WTLW. Join Patrick Cameron for the full hour of the most comprehensive football coverage around. All season long, Fridays at 10 p.m. on WTLW. I was out there last Friday night for about the last 20 minutes, the usual chaos going on on Friday night. That <laughs> makes it such an interesting place to be from their own 42-yard line. Pass under center. Adi in the eye. This is going to be a pitch to Adi. And he got a block from Hess that time. Adi's got first down yards and more. Look out. Kyle Adi turns the corner, headed to the end zone. Can he beat all the Panthers? He gets run down. Traced down by Braxton Althauser after a big play. Boy, talk about great blocking. I think ever since I gave them credit in that yeah. offensive line, I think they've really stepped it up. And Watch the quarterback get a block right here. There's Hess got a block. All the way down to the five-yard line. That's a 53-yard run for Kyle Adi. And that last downfield block, and I didn't see who it was, really sprang him for another 25, 30 yards. So Marion Local trying to get a three-score lead. Hess in the backfield along with Darren Meyer. This will be Meyer, and he gets hit at the six and is able to fall forward. Andrew Swisher with first contact. That was a picture-perfect tackle by Andrew Swisher. Look at that. Yeah. Wrapped the arms, kept them wrapped. They call it a no gain, so the ball goes to the five-yard line. Yes, and then Meyer and Adi in the eye. That's the throw. Rolls, rolls, looks, and throws to the end zone. Is it caught? It is, and that is Eifert. Great little run pass option on that. Last minute he sees him open in the end zone. Rolls right. Looks like he's gonna take it. 
then sees him. So with a 21-0 lead, the Flyers will send back out their PAT guy, Carson Bills. And here's the PAT attempt. Bill soccer styles it through, and it will be a 22-0 flyer lead. 2.31 to go before half. You're watching high school football on WOSN. Mark Labor Day on your calendar, the second annual LifeWise 5K, presented by the Tom All family of dealerships. The race begins at the Sunnydale House, where LifeWise Elida begins its second year. We have more to celebrate as the launch of Academies in Allen East and Spencerville take place in September. To sign up, Google Elida LifeWise 5K and follow the link to runsignup.com. I'm going to be there. Yep. Yeah, guess who's not running? <laughs> guess, guess who's a course manager? <laughs> I got too many uh, miles on my odometer to think about uh, about running that thing. But you can run it. You can walk it. Bring your whole family out. It's a great day. Here's uh, Bills to kick off. The ball is going to go out of bounds. Let's see what McComb chooses to do. What the technical choice is. It drives you nuts sometimes when that happens as a coach. Just score and give them good field position. Ball place on 35 we'll go to the 35-yard line, line as McComb chooses to take that version of this particular penalty. You know, Mark, we were talking earlier, you know, that three games before, before Labor Day. How about that? I just. I know. I, I, I don't know. I, I, it, it, I see why we're doing it. I, I'm not sure I agree with it. Uh, you, you take away kids' summers. And you know what? It's, it's not just kids. It's coaches. It's families. It's band members. It's cheerleaders. It's <laughs> so there's a tackle from behind. That's by Meyer. You know, we had a great conversation with Jack Albers. We did. You know, former great, great coach. I had so much, you know, I, I just cherish what that guy did, you know, and he talked about that a lot, about how the overemphasis sometimes, and sometimes it takes us being outside looking in in order to really catch that and realize how yeah. important family time, vacation times are to the success on a field. And I think it's hard to get across. We had dinner with Jack tonight at a friend's house of WOSN. What a, what a great guy. I always enjoy coming down. That ball's picked off. That was in the air a long time, and back there playing free safety is Nathan Busher. And Nathan Busher's up the sideline. He's finally going to be brought down, but that's the third interception of the half. This one by Nathan Busher. Free safety just set back there doing his job, Jerry. Yep. You can see there's a guy open, and Busher yeah, it, had it red. And it's hard to, you know, they've uh, Baron Local's got two players back there waiting on that. You know, they know they knew that the big play was going to be, you know, all the uh, big things that. McComb has in their arsenal taken advantage of. Tate Hess is picked off too. This time Nathan Bick Busher picks that one off and the Flyers in business again with 145 to go in the opening half and they would like to tack on yet another score. And we get a whistle and we're gonna get a McComb timeout. We'll take that with them. 145 to go before half. You're watching high school football on WSL. Timeout, McComb, their third and final timeout. Chris Algy has taken timeout number three of the opening half. Marion Local trying to put this one away here before the first 24 minutes come to an end. Hess throws. Busher catches that one. Going to stay in bounds. He was trying to get out of bounds, and I thought he could, yeah. you know, last minute there, he thought he could get a few more. To the 32-yard line, that one goes. Pickup of eight. Flyers in the hurry up. Good chance to practice that. Hess rolls, throws. That's caught over here by... Drew Laws. I think he said you will get out of bounds on this one. And that he did, and let's see, it's going to be a first down to the, what about the 27 it looks like, Jerry. And the Flyers do have three timeouts. Yes, they so, do. You know, playing the clock the best they can. And 
They'll take advantage of the timeouts well, when they need them. And, and when you've got a coaching staff, you say, okay, we're going to work on something we may well need later on yep. in the year. So get them out of bounds. Yep. See a couple subs coming into the game. Eifert came in, as did Laws. Yeah, your mindset changes a little bit when you've got a comfortable lead. Hess. He has Meyer in the backfield along with him. Has to throw. Good protection up front by the big fellas. And he's going to no, he did get out of the grass. Throws it down the field. It's caught. You can see a number's Eifert. Boy, what a lot of credit to Hess on that. He went as long as he could. Looked like he was about a foot from stepping out of bounds did. and ending that play. And and Eifert was wide open. They put that ball down on the two-yard line, so it's a 25-yard pickup. I think Hess has had a very good first half. To the I formation they go. Hess is going to try to run himself. Looked like he didn't get the snap cleanly. There we get one of those three timeouts. We do. We're going to keep it right here during our timeout. You can check our website, WSN.TV, for scores and standings for more sports and teams than anyone else in the state. Check out our broadcast schedule, upcoming games, social media posts, and more at WOSN.TV. Jerry, I talked to a guy this week said, hey, how come none of the schools ever print up their schedules anymore, those little pocket schedules you used to have? Well, I said, here, give me your phone. <laughs> WOSN.TV. Here's Friday That's night. Exactly oh, right. I got it. So uh, it's a it's a great tool that that uh, you can use for lots of different things. And I, I'm on there almost every night, then get in the morning just to see what happened the night before. We've got a lot of sports coming up this weekend. Tomorrow we got volleyball, the Parkway Invitational that will air on Sunday evening. That has always been through the years. I mean, since yeah. my days at being at Finley as the athletic director. That tournament was always a premier tournament. This one is a six-team tournament. They're going to play pool play in the morning, and then in the afternoon they'll have the, the ones and the twos and the threes each play each other as they come out of pool play. So we'll put a couple of those ones on. The volleyball was outstanding last weekend at Coldwater. We had so much good volleyball, we had to move the programming up a half hour at 4.30 instead of 5 to get it all on the air. Here's Marion Local trying to get in the end zone yet again. Long count. Adi, no, this is Meyer, and Meyer just blows into the end zone. So thanks to the pass that went to Eifert, Darren Meyer gets a two-yard touchdown run, the fourth score of the opening half. And Mary Local, who will get the football again to begin half number two. Here's PAT attempt by Carson Bills. And you know the challenge coming up in the second half, too. One, Marion Local gets the kickoff in the second half. And two, you know, you're talking about a, a relatively small roster. Mm. Oh, what in the world? Team certainly can play a factor. We're going to stay at 28 as the play, play goes to the left. That was a four-play drive. So if you look back over what they've done today, um, Hess obviously with the touchdown off the INT. The pass play that ended up to Busher. That took three minutes and 10 seconds off the clock. They went seven plays and 67 yards. Uh, Eifert's touchdown that they uh, had uh, TD pass he had just a few moments ago, that was a 58-yard uh, yard drive in three plays. Took a minute 16, and this one took just 56 seconds to go from the 40-yard line in and did so in four plays. And I don't think we expected that. I, I, I think we expected the ball control. I would agree. The big play coming out of the other side, and you know, but it's been there. So the Macomb Panthers will have 49 seconds left here in the opening half. And they would like to get to the locker room, I think, and regroup. Punted four times and thrown three interceptions here in the opening half to this very alert flyer defense, which has shut them out, 28-0. Carson Bills will kick off again. He's a 5'10", 150-pound sophomore. Here's Bills. Pops it up in the air. That's caught by 
Brady Shoup. And with no timeouts remaining in the opening half, the McComb Panthers will take over on about the 30, 32 yard line. Big emphasis by Marion Local right now is do not relax. Don't give mm. up a quick, easy well, score and let them back into the game in any way. I don't know whether this still applies or not, but in past years, if Marion Local shuts out their opponent, here's a handoff, this will go to uh, Swisher. If Marion Local shuts out their opponent, Coach Goodwin buys donuts for the whole team on Saturday morning. So there's some incredible motivation. <laughs> Yeah. Now I'm 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 going to hedge that by saying he's done this in past years. I don't know whether that's still in the in the playbook or not. Here's a handoff inside, and that's not going to go anywhere. I think our sideline camera just picked up the chant donuts <laughs> donuts. <laughs> we should try to try to confirm that at some point before this one comes to an end. And they certainly have played well defensively, and it uh, looks like McCombs going to try to get one more snap in before we get to the break, and they do so. This is a pitch coming to the right side of the formation. That's going to get just over the 40, and it will bring half number one to an end. It's been a good one if you're wearing blue and gold. Flyers will take a 28-0 lead to halftime. You're watching high school football on WOSN. the 35 yard line and see where the Flyers come up with it. Sometimes that's how you prevent a good run back. Just you pop it up. Pop and it up. And that is correct. So Mary Local with a 28-0 lead will come out in the second half. First possession, see if they can continue the domination they showed in quarter number two. Tate Hess is the quarterback. He wears number 10 in the backfield along with him is number 24. That's Darren Meyer right now. This will roll right and throw. And that's caught by Adi. First down yardies to about the 46-yard line, 11-yard pickup. You know, they've been they've been very efficient in the passing game. They have. You know, they, the, the, most of them are outs, you know, out routes. And, but uh, he's on target, you know, good coverage or, you know, good blocking. Everything's worked out well. He seems a lot more confident than he was uh, last week when we were here. Now, some of that was from the pressure that came from, uh, from, his, from the opponent, Wapak Kaneda, but he seems a little more confident this evening and throwing the ball very well. Here's Adi in motion. This will be Meyer. Meyer will bang up the middle and stretch to about the 49-yard line, which will be a three-yard pickup. You know, I don't want to jump on the fact that it's fatigue or anything like that, but you can really tell in the last, like, five, six, seven minutes of the second quarter, you can see the line difference. Mm -hmm. You know, the the movement, the pushing a little bit fo more forward just seemed to, you know, again, I don't want to blame it on fatigue necessarily. Maybe it's just talent. You can see that again on the OPAC instant replay that we saw right there. Second and seven. Flyers with a big second quarter today, taking this 28-0 lead as we head into quarter number three. Two receivers to the left. And Hess will throw straight back this time. He's going to throw it deep down the middle of the field, and it's caught. He put the ball right into the hands of Drew Laus. Oh, putting him down on the one. Did he catch him? You know, he looks, Hess looks so much more comfortable he back really there. Look does. at him. Looks so calm. And that ball is a strike. He's going to be tackled right there with a saving yep. tackle that time by Andrew Swisher. And he's going to come up just a bit short, but that's a 50-yard pickup to the one-yard line. Yeah, he just looks incredibly comfortable back there now. And we got a big stack up in the middle this time, and you can see it's legal to push him into the end zone. And almost did. And almost did. Short run. Well, didn't quite get there, however. Let's take a look at it again. This time it's the up back that's given the, the football, and that's Ethan Heitkamp. Sophomore trying to score from the one and couldn't quite get in there. Yeah, you give Hess a little bit of credit for that, too. He's the one pushing from behind that gave him that extra almost into the end zone. Here's Hess again under center. 
This will be Meyer, and Meyer will score his second town, touchdown today on a one-yard run. Real challenge now for McComb, though, to, to bounce back mentally. So a 65-yard drive that takes place in five plays. Thanks to that long pass completion of 50 yards. And back in to do the PAT opportunity, this is Carson Bills. That took just over two minutes, two minutes and three seconds, as a matter of fact, for that touchdown drive to occur. Here's the PAT. And this time, Carson Bills puts it through. His team will take a 35-0 lead. You're watching high school football on WOSN. Thanks for your sponsor for the Marion Local Flyers, the Hillsman in Automotive, providing professional automotive services since 1947. Everything from simple tune-ups and repairs to complete engine overhauls. Uh, Marion Local Flyer, premier sponsor this evening. 65 yards, five plays, two minutes and three seconds, and we're going to go to a running clock here. That ball is caught by Braxton Outhauser. He's run up the sideline, and he makes a really nice return for them. Macomb Panthers. Good job of switching field, switching sides of the field. And here we go. You can see the rule book for this once you get past that 30 point differential in the second half. So Macomb will take over on their own 44 yard line. And see what Coach Algie has come up with at halftime to try to put some points on the board. Of course. Chris Algie's team plays in the Blanchard Valley Conference. They start play next week. Here's a direct snap. This is going to go into the hands of Swisher. Swisher breaks a couple of tackles. He's over midfield. Jerry, you Good hard that, run that time by Swisher. Uh, Bacone was supposed to play Van Lu next week, but they're not playing this week for some reasons, I guess. Yeah, that's a big challenge. You know, that's also, you see the the growth of uh, eight-man football. It is. Yep. And uh, I remember I worked closely with the striker. Uh, I think they have a, I think it's a league now. And uh, it's very, very good. It's a direct snap again. Swisher's going to bounce this one wide. Cut back inside, down to about the 40. Of course, that league's going to change some with Liberty Benton leaving. I think what Corey Rawson leaves. And uh, there's one of those, North Baltimore, I think. Yep, going North to the Northwest Central Conference. Yeah, a lot, ton of uh, a ton of what ifs, yeah. um, you know, in the years ahead. There's a lot of schools that fit well to make a new league, but you know, doing it's another thing. The Swisser is going to stop and throw it deep. He's got a guy out here, and did he catch it. Nope, got knocked away at the last minute. He had Camden Glosser out here. And nice defensive play that time by Carter Jones to knock it away. Yes, great pass. You know, good positioning defensively and a great defensive play. Well, one thing they can always do is join the Sandusky Bay Conference. That's it. Because if you don't know where to go, you go to the Sandusky yeah. Bay Conference and there's a million teams they got in, what, four branches, three branches? Three, three I Three branches, think. whatever it is right now. Second down and ten from the 40. This is a pass from the previous quarterback, Grant DeShong, as they got out of that Wildcat formation a little bit. He completes that one. You know, I talked about, you know, coming back emotionally after that drive or after that score by Marion Local. And let me tell you, McComb right now yeah. is not That's correct. giving anything up. They're just going just as hard. That r Those runs by Swisher, yep. he's just barreling forward just as hard as he started the game. And a lot of credit for that. That picked up six, so it's third and four. Under the flyer, 34 yard line. This is the quarterback that time again, Deshong. That time he didn't have anywhere to room, anywhere to run. On the bottom of the pile was Darren Meyer, showing why he was player of the year defensively in the MAC a year ago. Well, you know, I mentioned that about, you know, no giving up and, you know, sometimes overused. You know, there's no quit in them. And I get that. However, that's something about Coach Algie's team. Mm -hmm. You know, regardless of record, yes, they won a state championship in 18, but, you know, regardless, their kids play hard, their kids play respectful, 
and you know that's that's why he's a great coach. It's the fourth and five here. Deshaun's going to roll to his right and look throws. Got a guy open deep, and is that one picked off? Does he stay in bounds? He did stay in bounds. Pick off that time by Ryan Holman. So the fourth time today that the <laughs> and of course better than any punt they could have done. <laughs> you know. But you, you can't, you got to play the game, you know. You're yeah. not going to bat that down and ignore an interception. You play the game. Fourth interception, that one by Ryan Holman tonight. And Mary Local stops a McComb threat. Mary Local, they start MAC play next week. They have the Minster Wildcats in here. And then on September 9th, they go to Delphi St. John's. Get MAC play going. Here's Adi, Kyle Adi getting the edge. Look out, Kyle Adi picks up a few yards and then gets run out of bounds through the chains on the far side of the field. Of course, if you're a Marion local flyer, you're thinking, you know, we might get to play the rest of this quarter, then coach is gonna let some other guys play in yeah. the fourth quarter. We better make this a, a good effort for us this evening. I'm sure that's being said in the huddle there is make this count. <laughs> yeah. You see the play came in from the sideline. That was brought in by Owen Moeller. Tate Hess remains at quarterback. He's got Adi and Meyer back there with him in the eye. This is Meyer up the middle. Meyer's got room to run and shows his big body and pulls over the 30-yard line. 16-yard pickup for Meyer, first down. Boy, you talk about blending the offense and the defense in a balanced attack. The Flyers have done that tremendously tonight. Talk about those O-linemen up front again. Adam Wenner, Jake Topp, Kyle Ungren, Shane Fleck, Mason Rose, the tight end, Connor Bruns. About the uh, early part of the second quarter on, they have been dominating the football game. And, you know, you mentioned uh, Bruns on that too, you know. Um, you know, the wide receivers, the receivers have done a great job blocking downfield all game. Ball's loose. It looked like it was hopped on by Camden Glosser. Yep, and the official signal that way. So turnover will put the football back to McComb with 4.08 to go here in the quarter. We want to thank Home and Insurance, your trusted local insurance specialist. They are proud to bring you tonight's scoreboard. Members of the Wayne Insurance Group with two locations to serve you in Chickasaw and in Versailles. That is Holman's Insurance. Turnover, balls on the 35-yard line. Mr. Deshaun is going to throw it deep. And a couple of guys battling out there for it. Number three for the Flyers was Carter Jones. Number two for the Panthers was Camden Glosser. And the ball will fall incomplete. Big arm, though. Yeah, and you know, I thought going into this game, the defensive backs would be so challenged by McComb, and they have been. And, boy, they've been in position every time. The interceptions, uh, what is it, four interceptions? Four that really interceptions, yeah. shows that. But some of those have been because of the pressure defensively, uh, you know, up front by Marion Local. But still, the defensive backs have done a great job tonight. Handoff, Swisher. Andrew Swisher still fighting for yardage, and Andrew Swisher pushes it down inside the 25-yard line. That would be a first down if he got inside the 25. Looks like he did. You know, if, if McComb stays healthy down the road, you know, yeah, look at the scoreboard right now, and somebody's going to say, yeah, sure. But, no, uh, you know, you've got a great running attack. You certainly have a great throwing attack, a passing attack. They're going to be good. And They're going to be good. They're in D7. Murray Local's in Division 6 this year. There's the, and that ball down goes to Shang as he couldn't get rid of it. Yep. And I thought yeah, he fumbled. Yes, I it. did. Yes. I thought Aiden Eifert caused the fumble. So the fifth turnover that will go against the McComb Panthers. And you look at a lot of those turnovers have been caused by that front four or front three defensively and a few of those linebackers. Just the pressure unbelievably. Let's see if we can. Uh, Eifert causes it. Let's see if we can see who fell on it inside. And looking for gun pilot. Looks like it was number 80 yep. came out with the football. Number 80 is Dan Bruns. And so 
Right back they get it. Fumble, fumble. And with uh, now with 2.27 to go on this running clock and the football on their own 29, Hess pitches back. This running back is number 45. Number 45 is Parker Hess, 5'10", sophomore. You talk about the success of, of this program, Jerry. Part of it is they get to play 13, 14, 15 football games every year, yep. and it gives them five extra weeks of practice And uh, for these young people. Yep, and you look at a lot of their scores, you know, that – they're going to get significant playing mm -hmm. time during some of those games. Yep. I mean, realistically, right now, they're going to get a quarter plus in this game tonight. Here's Hess in the shotgun this time. Quick pitch, Adi. Adi's got the edge. Look out. Kyle Adi up the sideline, cuts back, and finally gets run down from behind as he gets into Macomb territory. Saving tackle by Braxton Althouse. You know, that blocking down the field, Busher that time. You know, blocking down the field. I think Eifert was down there. Again, you know, you can't underestimate the blocking ability down the field of those receivers. 27-yard pickup to the 42 of McComb. A good look at Kyle Otte. Stoutly Hustle Award winner last week and our player interview, Meyer. Lowers his shoulder and pushes inside the 39-yard line. We'll be presenting our Stolly Hustle Award winner when this game comes to an end and try to snag an interview with a player. Ray Local has to run one more play in this quarter. A couple of guys come to the sidelines. Meyer comes out. Adi comes out. Probably be a lot more substitutions when we get this uh, – Final 25 seconds of this quarter over with. Tate Hess stays in at quarterback. He will go up under center. His handoff goes to 45, Parker Hess. And Parker Hess pushes it inside the 35-yard line. It'll be a first down, and quarter number three will come to an end. It's all Flyers, 35-0. You're watching high school football on WOSN. <laughs> Our instant replays tonight are sponsored by OPAC in Osgood. For all your industrial painting, staining, and assembly needs, call OPAC. Appreciate their instant replay work this evening. Very local with a 35-0 lead, and as we thought, that got some changes have taken place. This is Ryan Holman as the quarterback, and he hands off to Parker Hess, who gets very short yardage, if any at all, on that play. Mark, you were just commenting about the replay and the great replay, and here we see one. You know, that's something that a lot of the <laughs> a lot of the things you see that are streamed and things like that, yeah. they have one camera. Yeah. You know, and, and that's just something that makes, I'll say it, that makes this, you know, production so much better. I know it makes it better than the color commentary, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, but well. no, that is very, very good work by our camera people. But the simple fact of the station committing, you know, a number of cameras to, to the production. Here's Ryan Holman under center. This is the up back this time, which is uh, Benton Seitz. And he might have got a yard to about the 31. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm muting myself. And you're seeing McComb play a lot of players too right yeah. now. I mean, there's you might as well get him in, get him some playing time. That's not conceding anything. That's just playing your players. I'm using my WSN app, looking through some scores here this evening. I see Donovan Hepperly, I think, checking in the ba defensive backfield, I thought I saw. Here's Holman taking the snap. He's going to roll to his right this time. Look downfield. Pass is caught as he puts it into the hands of his receiver. That's number 20. That's Victor Holscher. That's a nice throw by Ryan Holman, six foot sophomore. And inside the nine yard line now, his pickup was for 22 yards.
Coach Goodwin used to say we would run the same play three consecutive times in practice. First team, first team, second team, first team, first team, second team. And that way those guys were getting a third of all the reps in practice. Obviously preparing yeah. them for this particular situation. Here's Holman under center this time. He will turn and hand off to Hess. Hess gets inside the, the 10 down to about the 8. Good hard play. running that time by Hess. Camera work on the field tonight by Caitlin Henderson. We got Lexi Waddle, Cassie Driscoll, and Caitlin doing our camera work this evening. Appreciate their efforts. And ben and Megan in the truck. From the eight yard line. On that defensive front for McComb, still in there, still going strong. That was a good hard tackle last time, good sure tackle. Here's pitch, Hess, Parker Hess, gets to about the seven on that run. This is more of a typical Marion local drive. The next play coming up will be the 10th play of the drive. But even there, look at, the, you know, yeah. two guys in on that tackle, and I can't, I can't tell who the two were. Unfortunately, I wish I could because, again, good, hard, wrap the arms. Third down, this will be from the eight. The play coming in from the sideline by Ben Ranley. I think that was Montana Pierce that was on that. I think it was number 12. Let's see if they put it up in the air again. That's the handoff short this time as they head to the up back sites. And it'll be fourth down. They also know they're taking their good old time on the offensive end. Yes, they are. And they know that clock is running regardless. The free WSN app is the easiest way to follow local high school sports. No one covers more schools, more sports, more scores than WSN. Search WSN in the App Store or Android Play Store. Fourth down. Off the ball into the end zone. Is it caught? It is. That'll be a home and completion as he finds number 20, Victor Holscher, for a touchdown pass. Boy, Holman did a nice job on that. There was no chance for that defensive back. He had good coverage on him. Look at that, good coverage. Just threw it on the back shoulder. So, I, uh, that was good coverage by was. Aiden Ebright. So, Ryan Holman gets his the first TD pass of 20 to season. And here's our PAT attempt again. And that one sails through. 7.01 to go. Flyers up 42-0. You're watching high school football on WOSN. Home Insurance, your trusted local insurance specialist, is proud to bring you tonight's scoreboard. Member of the Wayne Insurance Group with two locations to serve you in Chickasaw and in Versailles. It's Home Insurance. The scoreboard goes to 42 0 Flyers. That was a 11 play drive that went 71 yards and in 7 minutes and 39 seconds, which is a kind of a bit misleading with the, yeah. with the running clock type rules. TD pass from Holman to Holscher. I don't want to take anything away from the great catch, too. Yeah, it was, you know, was on the back shoulder. Yeah, he had to turn around. Yeah. And, but again, and it was caught against great coverage. A pair of sophomores. I think they might be on the field a whole lot next year. There's a kickoff by Bills. And it got out of bounds before it got to the pylon. Good heads up play down there by Andrew Free Swisher. Kick the from the kicking team. Making sure it got out of bounds instead of. Into the end zone. It's a difference of 15 yards. Ball in place on the 35 yard line. First down to come. Let's 
Some exciting games coming up this weekend. Catch Bath and Shawnee this weekend. You can catch Ottawa Glendorf Wapak tonight and again tomorrow on Saturday. That should be a very good game, I would think. But that, Bluffton yeah. Pandora Gilboa, that could well be a shootout tonight. Yep. So lots of games this week. As always, pass falls incomplete. I think just a little rushed that time. Yeah. Uh, Grant DeShong uh, hurried that one a little bit. It kind of got away from him, too, perhaps. See the clock running this tonight. It's a handoff and smothered up in the backfield very quickly as Braxton Outhouse. And you know you're looking at some of these uh, second teamers on defenses too, uh, Jerry, and they're playing very well on this series. Okay, that one was by Landon Arling in the backfield. He wears number 14. And here he comes right there. You know, we talk about the numbers, you know, difference, but, you know, sitting here and you look at this sideline and you look at the numbers mm -hmm. on, you know, what a difference, you know what I mean? And, you know, that certainly plays a role down, you know, late in the games. Luke Buddy also was in on that tackle the last time. It's a fake handoff and a shotgun type situation or a wildcat situation for Andrew Swisher. And I can't say it enough about Andrew Swisher. He's a, he's a tough, he hard is. runner. Yep. And that's why, again, I think down the road, they're going to be a very good football team. Picked up four that time to the 39-yard line. Under center this time will be the quarterback, Deshaun. In the backfield along with him is Braden Shaw. And he's going to punt. And it's corralled by number 15, which is Griffin Bruns. And Griffin's got some moves. Got a flag in the middle of the field there, I think, Jerry, right around the 36-yard line. Let's see what that call is. Yeah, we talked about that earlier in the game between the flag and the ball markers. Yeah. You know, it's, they look the same, but they do. that definitely was a flag. Yeah, that ball marker, There's the ball there mark. it is right there. That's where he fielded the punt. Those are orange. Illegal block in the back. And the flag this year the is team. yellow, of Ten course. Foul. First down, Marion Local. So we're going to get a penalty on Marion Local with 4.26 to go on the illegal block. I like those back judges with the good arm. You know, they take that flag up and they crank it about 20 yards <laughs> in the air with that little weighted thing they got in there. And So from the 25-yard line, very local quarterback, uh, once again, will be Ryan Holman. Let's see who goes in the backfield with him. Those guys will tell you it's yeah. spot on, too. That they throw that flag. It yeah. lands right on the spot where that <laughs> foul was. That's the sights in the backfield along with Holman. And this will be Parker Hess. That's something that people probably wonder, you know, like, do they have part of their training as throwing the flag? You know yeah. what I mean? Like, you have to practice that. You can see he picks up about a yard to the 26. Does Hess. Ray Local's been in control with this since they had a big second quarter. You can see they're just taking their time getting the play and running some clock down. Victor Horsher brings the play in from the sideline. It's Holman under center. He will turn and hand off to Hess, who makes the first guy miss. But still pushes the pile and pushes the pile and pushes the pile. Good run that time by Parker Hess. Listed at 160, but a drive in the legs that time. Good job by the backup lineman in there, just continuing that push forward. To the 37, they need to get to the... Cole Steinbrenner was one of those in there on the offensive line, just continued the push forward. To the 33 it went, so now it'll be third and a couple, under three to go in this one. We'll have our Stolly Hustle Award winner when this one comes to an end and try to get an interview on the field with one of the Flyers this evening. Holman, pitch, Parker Hess, cuts back in, first down yardage and more. 
Hunter Hess gets to the 44-yard line. Austin Niekamp out there on the left-hand side, six foot seven, 200-pound sophomore. Good well, downfield what, blocking. This will be a huge basketball team at uh, Marion Local this year. Um, they, they are tall and talented. This could be a really, really special year for Coach Guttermiller. And uh, admittedly, and he knows it because he does it every year, he's going to get a late start. Yep. And they're going to play a lot of basketball games in January and February to prep for the tournament. And they're going to have a good high school basketball team this year. Lots of, lots of height. Handoff, Parker Hess. And they stop him before he's able to get to the 45-yard line. Pick up about five, however, to the 44. 90 seconds to go. Had about four or five yards before he had any contact with him. It didn't actually give him six to the 45 Boy, hate yard. Hayden right in there on the tackle, though, you know, coming from a defensive back mm -hmm. position, wraps his arms. You know, again, it's down the field a little bit, but still good tackling. You live up in the, kind of in the Macomb area. Very close. That, that's got to be a long bus ride, right? Yeah, it is. It's in the northern part of Hancock County. Yeah. So now they're going to go to the victory formation and – Take a snap and get a kneel down. And uh, we'll have to do that one more time, and this one will come to an end. Very local preparing for MAC play next week when they will host the Minster Wildcats. And hopefully the Van Lu situation straightens itself around so Macomb has a game next week. Yeah, that's a that's a tough situation too, you it know, is. when you, you yeah. just don't know week by week. And again, Van Lu, they do everything they can to field a team every year. Oh, no, and, and I'm not talking particularly about Van Lu, but sometimes then you're switching opponents in the middle of the week. Correct. A couple teams can't find somebody to play and they end up matching up and it just becomes one of those type situations. Well, the Marion Local Flyers have succeeded this evening over Macomb. A little easier than we thought it was going to be thanks to a very stout defensive effort. Marion Local, 42, Macomb nothing. Postgame show coming up after this. You're watching High School Football on WSN. We're back at Booster Field here at Marion Local where the Flyers have taken a 42 to nothing win over the Macomb Panthers. I'm here with our Stolly Hustle Award winner tonight. That would be Tate Hess. Tate, let's talk defense first. A couple of interceptions in the first half. What did you see that allowed you to do that? You know, I just, D-line was all in their face. Gave me time to read, read what the receivers are doing. Right spot, right time. Well, and then the second one you pick off, you run back to the house, that puts your team up 7-0. What did you see once you picked the ball off? Well, that one, especially the D-line, because one of them made him pump fake, so late to throw in it. Once again, right spot, get out, Cole. <laughs> well, Tate, we were here a week ago, and you were 4 for 12 throwing the football. Tonight, you just seemed a whole lot more confident, a whole lot more comfortable. That week experience make a difference for you? Oh, yeah, of course. You know, receivers got open, line played even better. Everyone just played better as a whole. Well, Jerry Snodgrass and I were talking up in the press box. That last pass you threw, the long pass, that seemed as comfortable as you've been all season. Yeah, I mean, I was struggling a little bit, but coaches figured some stuff out with me, and hope I can keep repeating it. And then you get to hand the ball off to guys named Adi and Meyer. That makes a difference, too. Oh, yeah. Adi, as explosive as he is, and Meyer, big, strong running back. Wear teams down. All right, how about one more question, Tate? Your offensive line, those guys did a great job, didn't they? Oh, yeah. Everything, time in the pocket, never had rushes on me. All right, Tate Hess, our Stanley Hustle Award winner tonight. You can hand the microphone to Jerry there. Check out our highlights of tonight's Stanley Hustle Award winner on WOSN YouTube page from tonight's game. Jerry's 42-0 game. We were thinking it was going to be low scoring. We thought it was going to be a close game all the way, but the Flyers just played extremely well. You know, that first quarter, there was really no rhythm in the game. Nobody was taking charge. Those turnovers were big. They're turn they just turned the momentum a lot. But, boy, you know, just the grind it out, but the great balance. We talked about big plays. Yeah. It was Marion Local that had the big plays tonight, and that made all the difference in the world. We want to thank our sponsors this evening. That's been Holman Insurance this evening. It's been Hillsman Automotive, and it's been OPAC who sponsored our replay. We want to thank our crew tonight as well. 
On the field tonight, on our camera's been Caitlin Henderson. Up in the box has been Lexi Weil and Casey Driscoll. And of course, Megan Sherrick and Ben Reif in the booth. We want to thank them for all they did put this thing together. Jerry, thank you. We're going to have a nice trip home tonight again. It was a great night. Uh, it was a great game. Mary Local with a 42-0 win over Macomb. You've been watching high school football on WOSN.